Hello and welcome! In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing, assembling, talking about, demonstrating, and riding the Moquiel Asphalt. It's an urban commuter e-bike. I always thought my dreams began on a pillow, but no, it's two wheels. I really love the color. I love orange. So there's the bike, and in here... Oh, you finally joined me! Are you gonna help this time? Pedals. Pump. That's neat. Not many companies include a pump. It's not great, but it's better than no pump. Tools. There's a light for the front. A bunch of little bits and parts in here. I'm not gonna go through that yet unless I need it. Manual. But do we have color pictures? We do! Yes! And lastly, the charger. Ready? <laughs> Oh, it's actually, it's actually not that heavy compared to others. So next, there's a couple of screws over here that I'm supposed to loosen. Not completely remove, just loosen now. But they're loosened, they can twist. Wait, that doesn't, that doesn't look right. <laughs> I think it should go the other way, but it literally says, the screw should be facing inward. Isn't this inward? I think this is supposed to go this way. And then tighten down those screws. Now I can put on the handlebars and this is adjustable, but for the life of me, I've tried. I can't get the screw to turn with this. So I definitely need a better tool or more strength. That was on. That or this little image facing out. Now I can put this back on and those four screws back in. According to the manual, I'm supposed to install the display next, but then they want me to flip the bike and put it on the wheel. I normally don't flip the bike because e bikes are pretty heavy. This one's not that heavy, so I'm gonna flip the bike. But I'm gonna hold off on this. Before I put the wheel on, I gotta loosen these nuts on both sides. And now I gotta tighten these nuts with a tool. Not just my bare hands, otherwise the wheel will fall off. There we go. Front fender time. And it looks like this will need some tightening as well. So that front fender will come up like this. But before I do that, I gotta remove a little screw that's over here. Take the light, kind of bend this part. So that'll go right here. And this will go right here. And then the screw goes through both of them into here. This actually wasn't bad. Usually this part is kind of a struggle because it's a small area to work in. But this was fine. It's because I don't have to hold a screw with two different tools. I can literally just use this one to tighten it all down. Now I gotta pull out the screw right here on both sides and attach the rest of the fender. The fender should sit on there pretty evenly, which it is right now. But if it doesn't, you can fiddle around with this part right here. This will allow you to kind of move this whole piece back and forth. So you can push this out a little or push it in a little. And then the other thing you can do, which I actually ended up doing, is moving this whole piece up. So I loosened up the screw and I moved everything as far up as I could. Oh yeah, and I should probably plug this in. This is for the light. Next, I'm gonna tighten this to the frame. I'm gonna adjust the seat next. Sure, yet where I want it. I'm just gonna eyeball it. And this should have a lot of resistance. So there's this little knobby thing here that you turn. And when you clamp this down, you should be able to like just barely do it. <clears throat> now I'm finally ready for the display. So I am going to undo these little screws and then put this over the handlebar. Clamps onto here. And then you put the screws back in. Which is definitely easier said than done. <laughs> so once that's installed, I can still move it a little bit, even with the screws tightened all the way down. And finally, the pedals. They are marked 
little stickers right and left. The right one spins into here clockwise, and then the left one counterclockwise. Ew. And it appears that the chain came off. No big deal. That actually happens pretty often in shipping. So what I do is I pull down on that. And then I can put the chain onto here. And I do use a wrench to tighten down the pedal. Now here's something I did not mention in my previous video, which I totally should have. Even though this part already comes assembled, anything that already comes assembled, you wanna just double check and make sure it's tightened down. The battery is hidden in here and it can be charged while it's in the bike. But for whatever reason, if you do wanna remove it, you just turn the key that way and it pops out. And then to put it back, just make sure it snaps. And that's all the key is for, so you can remove it. You don't need it to start the bike. The power button is right here. Hold it down for a little bit. So once I get going, you'll see my miles per hour right here. This will be how many miles I've traveled total. This is pedal assist. Zero means it's just a regular bike. No motor, nothing, just a regular bike. To activate the motor, you go up here, up and down. Well, right now, it's just gonna be the up button. So I'm gonna click one up and some pedal assist one. So when you're pedaling, the motor is gonna assist a little bit. Or you could just sit there like a lump and that's the throttle. And I'm not really sure why, why there's a timer. This button right here, that is for the headlight. Click it once, turns it on. It also turns on, this is something that's really cool. There's lights on the side and then there's a light on the back. So when you hit the brakes, these light up even more. When the light is on, there'll be a little light icon right here. It's off, off. And the final button, which is right here, that's the horn. Over here, further down on the frame, it tells you this is a class two e-bike, 500 watt motor, max speed at 20 miles an hour, which we're gonna check in a sec. And on most of these e-bikes, you can find more information about the motor right here, which I am struggling to film, but there, there we go, 48 volts. And then it has the wheel size, 27, 0.5 inches. One thing that was kind of hard to find on here was the PSI. Because of this little white strip right here, it's really hard to see what you're looking at. I don't know if you can see it or not. 30 PSI is the min, and then the max is right here. 55 PSI. I had to look at both wheels, both sides, and just find the one that I could read the best. But hopefully that's in the, I wonder if that's in the manual. Oh boy. Here it says 20. I'm gonna take an educated guess here and go by the minimum for what the tires say because with fat tires, it's usually about 20, but these are not fat tires. Oh yeah, one more thing before I head out on this bike. You can adjust that front suspension. So right now it is fully open. And if I go like this, it's fully closed. So I'm gonna use throttle only. Let's we'll start with pedal assist one and see what the max speed is. We're not gonna see max speed. Maybe, it's really faint. You can barely see the screen. I didn't realize it wasn't showing up. Max speed is 20, like 20.5. 20 so now I'm gonna pedal and I'm gonna put this on. It's already on pedal assist one and let's see how fast I can take this. I got it on the hardest gear to pedal in. Hello, I'm back to narrate once again because once again, we can't really see the screen. I got it up to 20, 20.5-ish. 20 With throttle, it really doesn't seem to matter what pedal assist I have it on, it caps it out around 20. When I'm pedaling, it does do the same thing. No matter how fast I pedal, it caps it out at about 20, but in pedal assist five, I got it past 20, about 23.5. Basically, the higher the pedal assist, the more assistance you're getting from the motor. It makes it a lot easier to pedal the further up you go. So it really jumps forward when I hit the throttle. I'm a little nervous to read this one-handed. I can pedal just fine one-handed, but not so much the throttle. Asphalt has an aluminum alloy frame. 
Shimano 7 speed gear shift system. The battery is hidden. They're using LG cells. The seat, it's big, it's nice. I like to touch it a bit. <laughs> it's a good seat. <laughs> There's also a rack on back, which I am now going to gently stroke. LED lights on the back, integrated ones on the side. Very nice, I think those are cool. And one in front. Fenders are good. This way you don't get any muck all over your back and on the bike. Due to a couple complaints that I'm using bike trails with an e-bike, I decided to take this on a road where I knew they were doing construction, but last time I was here, the whole thing was open. Now it's all torn up, including the sidewalk, which is what I was gonna take, the sidewalk. I'm sure people would complain about that too, but listen, I just don't feel safe driving, driving. I don't feel safe driving out there. I especially don't feel safe riding a bike next to cars. The drivers in Florida are crazy. And my reasoning behind going on a road with construction was because everyone is forced to drive slow. So I headed back to my comfort zone and went back to a bike trail. So suck it to those that don't. Safety first. So I got it on pedal assist one, but you're not really gonna be able to see it. I found a new hill. It really doesn't look like much, does it? But this is more of a city bike, so do I need a huge hill? Well, anyways, I'm gonna show you how easy peasy it is to ride up this. I am pedaling. It would be somewhat of a little struggle to get up this hill without the motor assist, but look how smoothly it goes with the motor. Eh. See, it's kind of a hill. It really depends how I hold the phone. See, it's looking more like a hill now. Look how steep. It's not that steep. This e-bike is made for people between 5'6 and 6'6. Max load, 350 pounds. The bike itself weighs about 60 pounds and the range is between 50 and 60 miles. It really depends how you use it. So full throttle, you're gonna get less. Price, it was $17.99, it is now $14.99. The bike comes in brown, blue, and well, obviously orange. Two year limited warranty, and if you do decide to get it, They'll get it to you in two to seven business days, approximately. The video is almost done, but not quite. You gotta stay till the end because there's a really cute part. So I'm gonna toodaloodaloo loot myself out of here. But if you're interested in the e-bike, check out the links below. Also look for any coupon codes because if I have any, they'll be down there as well. Bye. Oh, you're a big boy. Look at you. Oh, it's so cute. get you off the road so you don't get smushed. There you go. <laughs>